everyone my name is Rachel welcome or welcome back to my channel so today I am bringing you guys romance novels for beginners for people that are just getting into this genre this is a video that I've had a couple people request that I do um, so I'm really excited to talk about these different books with you guys I have them kind of broken up into different like little like sub genres within the contemporary adult romance genre um, and books that I just think are a great place to start if, like I said, you're just getting into the adult romance genre. Now, I will be doing a completely separate video all about historical romances for beginners because I know that that is a video that people want to see from me as well. But I didn't want this video to be too, too long, so that's why I'm breaking them up into two separate videos. Plus, I think that if you're just getting into the romance genre, contemporary romances are the best place to start because obviously they take place in our world and our time period, right? So what I think I'm going to do is kind of work my way from like fiction novels that have really strong romances to romance novels to romance novels that are steamy because I feel like with romance you kind of want to dip your toe when it comes to like how steamy or how sexy a book is because I feel like if you try to jump into a book that has like a lot of steamy scenes you might be kind of shocked and I don't want you to get turned off from the genre because you read a book that was just too steamy for you at the time. Does that make sense? So all of that to say I think that a fantastic place to start when it comes to romance is is with fiction novels that also have a strong romance. These are also fiction novels that have a romance with a happily ever after. That is something that you kind of have to be careful with when reading the fiction genre because a happily ever after is not always guaranteed. As we see with authors such as Nicholas Sparks, most of his books do not have a happy ending yet they do have a romance in them. So I promise you that all of the books I'm bringing up today have a happily ever after. Um, but an author that I think is a fantastic place to start is Sophie Kinsella. She is technically a fiction or a women's fiction author, but all of her books have a very strong romance plot to them. And I do have a couple of my personal favorites. This one is I've Got Your Number. This one is a wrong number romance. I believe that the two main characters end up switching phones accidentally and so they start texting each other to try to exchange phones again and yeah this one's just really fun and then we also have wedding night and this one i can remember is really fun because the premise centers around our main character who she expects her boyfriend to propose to her but lo and behold he actually like breaks up with her and so she meets up with an old friend of hers and i think they made a pact that like if they they weren't married by a certain age they would just marry each other I think that's the plot of this one it's been quite a few years since I've read Sophie Kinsella and I definitely definitely want to reread her books um, because they're just so so fun I feel like you would probably refer to her books as like chiclet I've also really enjoyed um, can you keep a secret is one that I really liked um, the undomestic goddess is another one that was really fun I've heard pretty good things about her more recent releases these are some like older releases from her um, but yeah she is just a really fun fun author to go with she tends to write like really like quirky and perky heroines and kind of grumpier heroes at least from what I can recall um, another author that I would recommend starting out with is Catherine Center this is Things You Save in a Fire. This is my favorite book that I've read by her. I've only read two of her books at this point, but this one really took me by surprise with how much I loved it. And this one just has a really sweet and swoony romance, but this one is definitely more women's fiction than like Sophie Kinsella in that like this one has a more like serious tone. It centers more on our main character's life journey, not just the romance. And this one involves our main character, Cassie, um, she ends up moving to Boston to help her estranged mother who's going through some health issues. Um, she's a firefighter and so she starts working at the local fire department and she has a romance with the rookie in the fire department and it's just yeah it's it's a really really nice romance and a really great story overall so then moving forward i think when dipping your toe into the romance genre i think in general it's best to start with rom-coms um, and i would say that sophie kinsella's books fall into that category i would also highly suggest let me get them out of my pile <laughs> i would highly suggest 
Christina Lauren. They are an author duo. Um, they, especially more nowadays, write rom-coms and their romance novels nowadays as well are lower heat, meaning that there are no explicit or graphic sex scenes on the page. And that is also the case with the other books that I have brought up so far. I'll let you know when things get a bit steamier. Um, but yeah, my top recommendation from Christina Lauren has to be The Unhoneymooners. This is just such a fantastic like enemies to lovers story. It involves um, Olive and Ethan. They end up going on the honeymoon of like Olive's twin sister and Ethan's brother because um, they get sick at their wedding reception. And so this was like a vacation that they won and it's not refundable or anything like that. And so yeah, Olive and Ethan end up going on this Hawaiian vacation together. And it's just a really fun time. This one gives me vibes of that movie. I think it's Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Is that what it's called? Yes, it's just, it's really, really funny. Just such an awesome time. Another one that I would recommend is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. I will say that this one's not my personal favorite by Christina Lauren, um, just because of a trope that's used at the very end of this book. However, this is a really fun one because Hazel, our heroine, she totally is Jess from New Girl. If you've watched that show, like that is her. And then this is a friends to lovers romance with Josh. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of like cringy moments in this one. Like you'll definitely get like secondhand embarrassment <laughs> while reading this one, but it is entertaining. It's a good time. I will say this one's definitely steamier than The Unhoneymooners. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a good one. It's a good rom-com overall. Um, next I would recommend You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogle. So Sarah Hogle has written a couple books at this point and these books are definitely, definitely lower heat. From what I can remember, both books have one sex scene and it's not like super explicit or anything. So I feel like this is like the perfect kind of book to go with. Like I said, if you're just trying to get into the romance genre and this one's just like a really fun and ridiculous and over the top premise because we have Naomi and Nick. They have been engaged to each other for a while and they have now become sick of one another. So Naomi wants out of their engagement and it turns out that Nick does as well. And so they come up with this deal that whoever like quits the relationship first has to foot their non-refundable wedding bill. So it ends up being a lot of like Nick and Naomi pranking each other. I will say that this book sometimes feels a bit immature and like I said, over the top, especially when you factor in Nick's parents, like Nick's mom in particular is such an overbearing future mother-in-law to Naomi. And so like the antics between them are really freaking hilarious. But I will say, I don't think this is a book for everybody, but if you are interested in this kind of like second chance romance with just really funny antics, I think that you would really enjoy this one. So that's why I recommend it. I would also highly recommend these two Audible original audiobooks by Cara Bastone. So if you do have an Audible account, you do have access to these. The first one is Call Me Maybe. And this one is about our hero and heroine. Um, the hero is like a customer service rep and our heroine is trying to get like her website up and running, but she's having issues. So she calls customer service and it's a romance between the two of them. Um, so it takes place almost exclusively like on the phone, which is really fun. And then Sweet Talk is the other book in this little series. Um, and this one is like a wrong number romance actually, where the heroine knows who the hero is, but the hero doesn't know who the heroine is because he put her name wrong in his contacts list. Um, so she's just listed as JD. And once again, these are lower heat romances because they're like five hour audiobooks and both couples don't even really meet until very close to the end. So yeah, it's just really sweet, really, really swoony. Highly recommend both of these. Another Audible original audiobook that I would highly recommend is Heidi's Guide to Four Letter Words by Tara Civic and Andy Arndt. Andy Arndt is actually an audiobook narrator and so it was really fun to see her collaborate with Tara Civic. What I love about this audiobook and what I think will draw in a lot of people that are new to the genre is it's just a, such a fun premise and just like with the other Audible original audiobooks that I brought up in this video, the production value is just next level. So this one's about Heidi. She gets laid off from her teaching job 
and she decides to start this podcast where she will read sex scenes from romance novels to try to get more comfortable with her sexuality basically and oh my god this audiobook had me like in stitches i was laughing so much because it's so funny like you hear heidi having like these technical issues with like her podcast equipment and then her trying to read these scenes and like there's a couple where she's um like drinking wine while she's doing the podcast so she's like getting drunk like it's so so fun there's also this really adorable friends to lovers romance with her neighbor. It's yeah, it's just this one's just really, really a fun time. Now that I'm thinking about it, another romance novel that I would highly recommend that isn't all that steamy is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This one was recently adapted into a movie and I really enjoyed the movie adaptation. But this is a classic like enemies to lovers romance. It's an office romance as well. I feel like most of you have probably heard most romance booktubers talk about this book before. So I'm not going to harp on it too much. However, this was like the first contemporary adult romance that I read back in 2018, like after I was getting back into reading for fun after grad school. So I highly recommend it as being a book to kind of dip your toe into the genre. So I have one more book to recommend that is really low heat before getting into the steamier books on this list. And that is The Gravity of Us by Brittany C. Cherry. This one is a grumpy hero, sunshiny heroine book in every sense of that term. Like this is a classic grumpy sunshine romance. Very, very emotional, very heavy. Um, um, but also just beautifully written. So if you're not in the mood for a rom-com, I would definitely recommend checking this book out. Um, I definitely need to read more from Brittany C. Cherry because I really did love this book so much. This one's actually another really emotional book. This is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I do think that this toes the line between fiction and romance because while there is a very, very strong romance and there is a happily ever after and all of those things, um, this book really focuses on Kala our heroine, our main character, and her relationship with her estranged father who lives in Alaska. And she ends up going to Alaska to visit him because he's dying from an illness. Um, and then that's where she meets Jonah, her love interest, who's this really, really grumpy dude. There are a few steamy scenes in this, but it's nothing too graphic. So I feel like this is a good one to go with. Once again, if you're dipping your toe, especially into like more emotional romance novels, this one made me cry so much. Like just know that it's sad. This is a very sad book, but I also really enjoyed the romance. Getting back into some more comedic books, I highly recommend The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This is a book that is so, 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 so hyped up on TikTok or BookTok especially, but also YouTube. Um, this is Allie Hazelwood's first novel. This came out in 2021. I don't think that it's overhyped actually. I think that it does deserve the hype. This is a really great uh, fake dating romance between Olive, she's a PhD candidate, and she ends up starting this fake relationship with Adam, who is a professor at the same university. And yes, there's some cringy bits to this. There are times where you might get secondhand embarrassment, but like it's a really great romance. And there were moments in this that had me swooning because I love Adam so much. Like he's a grumpy hero, but he's also very swoony. And from what I can recall, there was one sex scene in this. So I feel like this would be a good novel to kind of start bridging the gap between like the lower heat romances and the higher heat ones. Next up, we have a really fun one. This is Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This is book one in her Well Met series. What's really fun about this series is that it centers around a Renaissance fair and this first book is still my favorite of the series. There are three books currently out, um, but we have Emily. She moves to the small town in Maryland, um, and then she meets Simon, who is, I believe, the English teacher at the local high school where her niece is currently enrolled, and so her niece wants to do the Ren Fair, but if you're underage, you have to have an adult be your chaperone and do the Renaissance Fair with you, um, so that's how Emily gets roped into it, and yeah, we have Simon, like I said. He he basically runs the Renaissance Fair and what's so fun is like the role-playing aspect of this because during the Renaissance Fair Emily is like a tavern wench and then Simon is this swoony and sexy pirate and he wears eyeliner and it's just it's so 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 good and just like with the love hypothesis I feel like Well Met is a really good book to go with if you're bridging the gap between like lower heat romances and higher heat ones. Um, so then I think I have just a couple of recommendations left. 
I have to recommend The Bromance Book Club by Alyssa K. Adams. Now, the entire series is fantastic, but this first book in particular is really amazing because this does center around a book club of men who read romance novels to better understand their partners or to better understand women in general. Um, and so the way that this book and the series talks about the romance genre is really amazing and really educational. So for that reason alone, I would highly recommend this book. Um, but also what's really fun is that during the course of this first book, they're reading a historical romance that is a marriage and trouble story. Um, just like this story is a marriage and trouble story between Gavin, our hero, and Thea, his wife. Um, and it's just really fun to like read the excerpts from that historical romance novel and how Gavin can apply what he's learning from the novel to his marriage with Thea. Of course this is really fun as well because the guys that make up this book club are just so entertaining and I just adore this series with my heart and soul. It's just it's it's really fantastic. Um, and then uh, last but certainly not least, I would highly recommend the Bergman Brothers series by Chloe Lise. This actually has a very, very similar vibe to the Bromance Book Club, specifically because I believe it's book three, which is Ever After Always, which is also a Marriage in Trouble story, um, where a few of the brothers like kind of form their own book club and they start reading romance novels together and so they rope Aiden, who's the hero of that book, in to their little book club. And again, the discussions around the romance genre are just fantastic. This is just a really fantastic series and these books are a bit on the steamier side, which is always really, really fun. I thought last but certainly not least, I would recommend a romance novella author that is really, really great to start with. That is Cassie Mint because her romances are really sweet and swoony for the most part. Um, and they're not too, too steamy. There's usually one, maybe two sex scenes in them. Um, and I just feel like they're a really great place to start with the romance genre because they're short and sweet and to the point um, you get all the benefits of reading a romance um, without putting too much time into it, I guess you could say. Um, and if I could only recommend one to you, I would recommend Big Bet which is just the sweetest friends to lovers romance between our hero who's a blackjack dealer and our heroine who is a burlesque dancer at the same casino that our hero works at. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Any excuse that I have to talk about Cassie Mint, I will. All right guys, that's going to be it for this contemporary romance for beginners video. I would love it if you would leave a comment down below. If you want to leave even more recommendations for beginners, for people that are watching this video, or even for myself, because I always love getting recommendations from you guys, I would also love it if you would leave a like and subscribe. And I thank you so much in advance if you do, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.